Hello. Welcome to Cultural Resource Management Anthropology 451 at the University of Montana. My name is Doug McDonald, and I'm a professor of anthropology at the University of Montana. My archaeological research takes me all over Montana and Wyoming in search of great archaeological sites. We primarily work for cultural resource management federal agencies such as the National Park Service and the Bureau of Land Management. Here at the University of Montana, I teach classes in archaeology and, as you know, cultural resource management. I've taught this class at UM now since 2006, with this one being the first to be offered fully online. With this course, University of Montana students can actually complete a fully online undergraduate anthropology degree here at UM. I look forward to getting to know each of you through the digital world of cultural resource management. In terms of class structure, we will use Moodle for everything. In terms of what we're going to be doing this week, we're going to give an introduction to the course as well as a review of the syllabus. That's what today's video lecture is about. I'll talk a little bit about how to use Moodle. I'll introduce what cultural resource management is. I'll talk about my summer in cultural resource management. And then next week, a little bit of a preview on the history of cultural resource management. So this is the syllabus for the class, Anthropology 451, Cultural Resource Management. Again, my name is Doug McDonald. I'm a professor. I'll have office hours Mondays and Wednesdays from 10 to 1150 in Social Science 203. If you'd rather have, rather have online office hours, you can just email me and we can make an appointment to have a Zoom meeting. Um, in terms of the course objectives, Anthropology 451 will provide students with a full understanding of the world of cultural resource management. Students will learn the pertinent laws, agencies, and procedures of CRM. What are cultural resources? What does it mean to manage them? Why do we need to manage them? Students will learn about cultural resource management via video lectures, websites, movies and videos, as well as readings. By the end of this course, students will have a strong understanding of what it takes to be a cultural resource manager and will have enough information to determine if this is a potential career option. This is an online course. All lectures, quizzes, tests, etc. will be conducted on UM's online learning website, Moodle. You will need your NetID and password to use Moodle. There is a Moodle 101 tutorial for students to help teach you how to use it. You can click on the syllabus or on our Moodle website to get access to that Moodle tutorial. Students will have assignments due every Sunday by 11.59 p.m. The week one Moodle tutorial is worth five points. It is the first assignment due this Sunday, September 5th, before 11.59 p.m. You'll upload your certificate through the Moodle website. There are eight online short answer quizzes, each worth 20 points for 160 points total. There are two online exams, a midterm and a final, each worth 100 points or 200 points total. And there will also be four movies and associated movie quizzes in the week that there are no regular quizzes or tests. These movie quizzes are worth a total of 40 points. There are 400 total points available with grading based on a standard percentage of 100. Any graduate students in this class will be required to write an additional 10-page paper worth 100 points. The rest of the syllabus can be found on our website at Moodle, and you can download it and look at the weekly assignments that are due. In terms of those assignments, again, we'll have eight online quizzes worth 160 points a midterm and a final exam worth 200 points, movie quizzes worth 35 points, and that Moodle tutorial at the beginning of the class this week for five points. And then grad students have another 100 point paper. The class textbook is Tom King's Cultural Resource Laws and Practice. You can get it at the bookstore at the University of Montana. You can order it through Amazon, or you can use the Kindle version which is available through Amazon as well. This is what Moodle looks like as you log into it. Um, the Moodle tutorial will walk you through how to actually use the website. I'll, in addition to these class videos, I'll post lecture notes, which is essentially the PowerPoint slides that I use under the narration for this video lecture. Other things that we'll use Moodle for um, in terms of uh, what you can find on Moodle, I'll keep the gradebook on Moodle, the movies that I'll ask you to watch are on Moodle. I'll also show you uh, helpful internet web links that will be helpful in terms of understanding the topics for the week, and we'll have occasional online readings through Moodle. In terms of course announcements, I will also make course announcements by clicking on sending emails through Moodle. So the University of Montana needs to know your accurate email address. Uh, so for example, some of you use Gmail or Hotmail. 
you should have your University of Montana emails forwarded to those Gmail or Hotmail accounts so that you make sure you see my announcements if, if I make them. So what is cultural resource management? It can be defined as the means by which we account for the impacts of government projects on important cultural resources. Why do we manage cultural resources? Well, we do it because it's the law. Tom King defines a cultural resource as any resource that is of a cultural character, which means humans made it. There's typically an age limit of about 50 years for cultural resources in, in terms of which resources we manage. There's four main types of cultural resources, archeological sites, historic resources, such as buildings, traditional cultural places, and objects of cultural importance. There's a video that I want you to watch on traditional cultural places or TCPs for this week. True or false, cultural resource management or CRM equals historic preservation. Well, that's false. There's a lot of overlap between the business of historic preservation and cultural resource management, but the fact is that the laws that we're going to talk about actually allow the legal destruction of cultural resources. So historic resources are not always preserved in cultural resource management. This figure from Tom King's book, Cultural Resource Law and Practice, is a good one to look at because it look, shows you the overlap between cultural resources and all the different laws that we'll talk about in the class. So by what means do we manage cultural resources? Well, there's various types of laws that allow us to manage cultural resources. Most of them that we'll use in this class are federal laws, and I'll talk in, in a minute about the four key laws. There are also state laws, tribal laws, and local municipal laws. Uh, we'll focus on the federal laws, including these four key ones, the National Historic Preservation Act, or the NHPA, the Native American Graves Protection and Pre Repatriation Act, or NAGPRA, the Archaeological Resources Protection Act, or ARPA, and the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA. So I spent my summer and most of my summers since I've been here since 2006 at the University of Montana uh, conducting archaeological research archaeological research for cultural resource management projects. This is a photo of a rock pile or a cairn down uh, south of Red Lodge for a project we did for the Bureau of Land Management. They wanted me and my archaeology team from the University of Montana, including students and former students, to examine the project area, which was uh, hundreds of acres big, in terms of finding archaeological sites. Once we found the archaeological sites, we map them, record them, and tell them where the tell the BLM where the sites are so that they can manage them. And that way we're helping the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, manage their cultural resources. We also conduct archeological surveys of backcountry trails, such as this one, which is the Sky Rim, a beautiful trail up in the northwestern part of the park, just south of Big Sky Ski Resort. We also conducted archaeological work uh, in other areas of the park along various major river corridors. And this summer, we recorded the first Native American rock art, these handprints, in one of those project areas. Unfortunately, I can't tell you where those handprints are located because that would divulge important information that the park doesn't want us to tell in terms of managing the cultural resources and protecting them from tourists. We also found important uh, bison bones that were hunted and killed by Native Americans over 9,000 years ago along major river valley in Yellowstone. So all this information that we collect in our summer projects allows Yellowstone to manage those cultural resources, in this sense, uh, these archeological sites. In the past, we've done all kinds of various cultural resource management projects. Uh, we've uh, studied Air Force bases and conducted archeological work and surveys to identify important cultural resources in Air Force bases in New Jersey, such as this photo shows, Florida, Nevada, Montana, and Wyoming. There's a video that I posted that I want you to watch on the Savannah River Cultural Resource Management Project. Uh, this is a good video that shows how federal agencies consider the impacts of their activities on federal lands. So that's the video for this week. It's just meant to be an introduction to cultural resource management. Over the course of the semester, you students will be able to figure out whether cultural resource management is an appropriate career choice for you. There's a lot of job opportunities out there and I'll hope to disseminate some information about those opportunities for you as we move forward in the class. So next week, we'll talk about the history of cultural resource management and provide a better summary of our cultural resource management laws.